were sitting with the singers. I didn't know that. Well, thanks for singing. I, I said that. <laughs>
Hey, good morning, people of God. Good morning. Good to be with you here today. After an incredibly amazing, beautiful day yesterday, we certainly give thanks for the Lord for that. I thought it was a never-ending winter. Um, Want to wish certainly today on this special day we have we have the celebration of Easter we have a celebration of Christmas we have the celebration of Pentecost these high and holy days and then the other significant day is Mother's Day and so we want to wish all the mothers out there a happy Mother's Day but also to the aunts and the grandmas of course we wish a happy Mother's Day in a sense too and really in in, in a way we give thanks for all the women in our lives. And the impact they make, God created us, man and woman, and in that we find great blessings. So certainly we think about moms today, but we praise God for all women and the impact they have in our societies, in our families, in our communities, and beyond. So uh, happy Mother's Day to y'all. With that also, when you, mothers, when you leave today, or ladies, um, they'll be giving out carnations on the way out today. The Women of Hope put those together in celebration of today and mindful of the life that comes through mothers. So um, let's see, my name is Pastor Ryan. It's good to be here, as I said with you today. I get to lead you in worship. In just a little while, Pastor John will be down to share with us the message. We started a series last week called The, the Fruit of the Spirit. And, and so we heard last week in the book of Galatians about love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness and self-control. And so we're going to be walking through each one of those words now as Pastor John set the tone last week with cultivating or preparing the soil. Now we're going to be talking about each one of those fruits. So today we're talking about love. We talked about love back in February and and love is one of those things when we think, hey, we, we got this, we understand this. And maybe we even think, hey, we do a pretty good job of loving people, especially our moms today. And yet, as we dive into scripture, we recognize that love is not just this thing we we fall into and fall out of, but it goes much deeper and much richer. As we'll hear in our readings today that God himself is love. And so when we're trying to understand, when we're trying to pursue this fruit and see what the spirit of God is doing, we look first and foremost to our heavenly father. To, the, to our Savior and Lord and to the work of the Spirit in our lives. And so Pastor John will unpack that with us a little more today in just a little while. Um, if you're here this morning too, if you are here this morning, and you'd like to let us know that you're here to worship, you can grab your phone, you can jump on to uh, our Timothy app, which we have out there, that's available to anybody. You go to the giving section, special, and it has a place, just let us know you're here to worship. That's really helpful for us as we continue to plan and prepare and pray uh, as we move throughout the seasons. If you don't have a phone or the app, There's cards in the pews and maybe one in your bulletin when you came in. You can fill that out, throw it in the offering plate. Along with that, if you have prayers today, we'd love to pray with you, alongside of you, for you. If you have a prayer request, you can write that on the back of one of those cards that you have, and that will go in our offering plate. Now, if you'd like a prayer placed into our worship service today, then you'll just keep those, and I'll walk around during our offering time, and you just wave your hand in the air. Like you just don't care, I'll grab it from you and we will incorporate that into our time of worship. All right, that's all the kind of the worship stuff. Now we have a few announcements we want to get you going in before we begin our time in worship. First and foremost, near and dear to my heart, VBS, it's almost summer, so it's time to start talking about VBS. So many of you are already connected in this. This year it's going to be a monumental year for us and for our kiddos. This is such an amazing and and beautiful thing that we do here at Timothy because we welcome obviously not just our kids but the kids from the neighborhoods, friends, family, all that stuff into our campus up at our demise and we speak God's word into their lives. We sing and celebrate. So many of you know that. But in order to make that happen, um, we need all the help we can get. And so whether you're volunteering that week, there'll be time to sign up for that or whether you can just donate some things to help collect items that help us have a successful week. Uh, Out front, you maybe saw it on the way in, there's a nice, beautiful board out there. There's one up at north side too. It's got cactuses on it, things we need for our our year ahead. And if you're willing to grab one of those things and supply that for us this year, that would be incredible for us. And it is truly a blessing 
to our kiddos and to our families and to those who have volunteered to help. Again, we charge absolutely nothing for this. This is one of our opportunities to transform lives through Christ. And Timothy does such an, a great job doing that. So secondly, we have another way uh, you can be a part of something. We have our Live Well Community Fair coming up on June 4th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. here at Wyatt Campus. This is an event that has grown and grown and grown over the years. Uh, it's a place where anybody, again, it's a free for the community to come. You get to hear and receive uh, help, encouragement, support in all kinds of different areas of health and well-being. There's going to be more than 32 organizations here this year, including Jesse and Thomas, the comfort dogs. So, you know, if you don't come for anything else, come for the comfort dogs. Um, Burr Oaks Nature Center's coming, housing resources. There's going to be a free vision screening. Uh, and there's going to be healthy food prepared by Shelf Alan Plemons. So you're not going to want to miss, lastly, for the kiddos, the 52-foot obstacle course that you can challenge me on, kiddos. We can see who's going to bring home the victory. So there's more information on our website. Again, put it on your calendars, June 4th. It's a, it's a fun event, and it's a very um, helpful resource if you know others who may use it as well. All right, next, Legacy. Lots of stuff going on. We have our legacy um, seminars coming up, if you will, uh, in a few weeks. If you're interested in leaving a legacy in your life, um, when your time comes, when the Lord calls you home, especially when it comes to finances, that's what this workshop or seminar is available for. Uh, we have a video, so I'm going to play that because they're going to give you way more information on that. So I invite you to tune your eyes and ears into that from Doug Spilker. Good morning. I'm Doug Spilker and a recent addition to the executive board here at Timothy. My wife and I have always tried our best to be good stewards of the financial assets that the Lord has blessed us with. However, due to tax law changes and the financial ups and downs of the world, we have found it very confusing and frustrating on how best to donate to our charities, including Timothy. Maybe you're confused too. To that end, the executive board, in concert with the Give Commission, has scheduled two identical seminars to share with you about how best, from a tax and insurance perspective, to maximize gift giving to your favorite charities. The Legacy Planning Seminars will be held on Saturday, May 14th and May 21st in the Fellowship Hall at the Artie Mize campus from 9 until 10.15 or so, depending on questions. They will be conducted by Paul Hawkins, a financial advisor with Thriven. If you don't recognize Thriven, it's the new name for the previous AAL, or Aid Association for Lutherans. This will be a very high-level discussion regarding strategies and no hard sell of any products. A free breakfast, catered by hy V, will be served starting at 8.30. Who should attend? Anyone. Whether you're retired, thinking about retirement, in the peak of your earning potential, or even young adults that may be assisting their parents with their financial strategies would benefit. Babysitting will be provided. Please RSVP with the church office or online. Again, this is a high-level introductory type of seminar just to give you the tools you can use or discuss with your financial advisor. When I mentioned this seminar to my wife, Kathy, she immediately showed interest and wanted to attend. However, to be totally transparent, I'm not sure whether she said this before or after I told her it was a free breakfast. All kidding aside, this is a great opportunity to learn more about financial strategies to help reduce your taxes while potentially increasing your support for our church, both now and as a lasting legacy. For more information, see the church bulletin, our website, or reach out to me or other members of the Legacy Committee, including Mel Falk and Joe Sauter. Hope to see you there. All right, yeah, throw that on your calendars as well. It's a great, again, it's a good opportunity for you just to learn some things. And as he mentioned, this is no hard sell. Um, it could help you uh, plan ahead or whatever. Uh, Joe and uh, Mel are going to be out in the back after the service. If you want to just ask them questions or you want to sign up, please touch base with them. And uh, we do need a little sign-up so we know how much to prepare food-wise. 
Um, at just a moment, I'm going to have you stand, but uh, before we do that, if, if you're a guest today, thank you for taking time to be with us and worship with us, to bring your hearts and your voices. We, do, we are certain that you will be blessed today because we, we know and are confident that the Lord is here and present. Our ushers, elders have some love books, what we call love books that has a devotional in it and a few other resources, a little bit about Timothy as well. Uh, if you'd like one of those, you just let them know you're coming through. Uh, if you don't want to raise your hand in the middle of the service right now to point yourself out, you can catch them afterwards or catch me and we can make sure to give you one of those at that time too. So as they're walking through the aisles, I want to invite everybody to go ahead and rise and greet those around them for just a moment. And then you're going to remain standing as we begin our time in worship. people of God we begin our time this morning in worship as we lift our voices but first we're reminded of the blessing we received at our baptism we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen let's sing
Be seated. Please be seated as we hear our readings today. Indeed, one of those readings we hear is exactly what the Lord calls us to do. They ask him, which is the greatest command? And what does he say? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And so we hear that today as we dive into the readings and uh, hear God's word. But we started with our first reading from 1 John. You wanna know about love, you wanna know about biblical love, and you wanna go one place, one stop shopping, your book is probably 1 John. And so today we hear about that as John calls us to this same love for one another in 1 John chapter four. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent the son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they live in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. This is the word of the Lord. You've heard the repetitiveness there. God is love. And because it all starts with him, we know that we can love one another because we are first loved by him. We dive into our gospel lesson today as we hear more about this from Jesus' own lips as we dive into Matthew chapter 22, starting at the 34th verse. Hearing that Jesus silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in all the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. This is the gospel of our Lord. Upon hearing God's word, we take time to lift our hands and worship this God of love who dares to love us sinners. We sing. church we are your sons and daughters we gathered here to meet with you we lift our eyes we lay our hearts before you expected here for you to move. With our hands to the heavens alive, in your presence. 
our desire is for God to do his will in our lives. And while we've heard this morning this call from both John and from our Lord and Savior to love, it's a command, Jesus. The greatest command is to love. And yet the reality is we recognize we have fallen short in that. And so we take some time this morning as we do every Sunday to just reflect on our shortcomings, to reflect on our flesh and our minds that stray and desire anything and everything but the will of God. And so I invite you to join and rise with me as we come before our Lord today in confession. Please stand. This morning we come before our God and Father to confess our sins and to seek and find forgiveness in Christ alone. Eternal God, We confess that we have tried to hide from you, for we have done wrong. We have lived for ourselves. We have refused to bear the troubles of others and have turned from our neighbors. 
We have ignored the pain of the world and passed by the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed. Oh God, in your mercy, forgive our sin and free us from selfishness, that we may choose your will and obey your commandments through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Church, as we confess that this morning, we need to hear the good news and we need to hear it over and over and over again. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to and for us. For His sake, He forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, He gives the power to become children of God. And He bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. So may the Lord who begun this good work in us bring it to the completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a simple song we sing when we were little. Jesus loves me. Today we're reminded of that while the tune is a little bit different. We join together in that song reminding ourselves of God's great love for each of us. We sing.
such a powerful reminder again that we must hear, especially upon hearing that we are forgiven. Remember, not only are we forgiven, not only has God kind of set our sin aside and destroyed it, but he looks upon us and he loves us. I invite you to be seated at this time. We're going to welcome, and as they're sitting, our kiddos, we're going to ship them off. If, if kiddos want to go to our Faith Roots class here, actually, I'm sorry, I'm jumping the gun. We're going to do the creed first, actually. So uh, I got them excited now. They're ready. Their ears have perked up. They're ready to confess the faith with us in the creed first. So let's do that as we join together, confessing our faith in these words, this beautiful ancient creed that the church has confessed throughout time. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. It's good for us to confess that together as a church. Now, kiddos, it's time for Faith Roots. If you want to head out those back doors over there, we got some teachers waiting for you today. You have some time together. You have some time in God's word yourself uh, at a level for you. And uh, parents, I encourage you, when you pick them up today, ask them. Ask them some questions. Ask them what they got. We send a take-home sheet every week that you have something you can talk about with your kids. and gives you just that opportunity to step up as a parent, to fill that spot, and to be that leader in their house. So we encourage you to do that as they head out. You can pick that up when you pick your kiddo up this morning. As they head out, we are also going to take some time to gather our tithes and offerings. And just a brief reminder, if you have a prayer request you want incorporated into our prayers today, would you just hold that up? I'll sneak by and grab that uh, during this tithe and offering time, and we will worship the Lord through our gifts and through song.
the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath, till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe, for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Let's stand, church. Let's stand and sing. It's okay to clap. That's good. That's good. Man, that, that is such a, a song of worship. We want, that's what we want. We want the love of God to flow in us so that each and every day throughout all eternity, which it will, we would praise the King of Kings who loves us, who has risen, and who lives with us each and every day. And so we celebrate those words as we sing them today. Uh, we dive into a time of prayer at this time. Uh, we have a few prayer requests I want to uh, bring out that have been shared this morning from the congregation. One is for uh, Kathy Holenbeek. Uh, at the uh, sudden death of her brother this past week, we want to ask for care and comfort for the family as they navigate this really kind of dark season. There's also a prayer request for uh, a friend of, of the Downs who was recently diagnosed with, with lung cancer after have beating breast cancer twice. And so you can imagine the burden that weighs on that family, that individual. And so we lift up prayers for them. And then for our students this coming week, our coming weeks, finals are showing up, a time of stress and, and high expectation. And so we want to be praying for our students, uh, young and old. As we place these petitions before our Lord, I'm going to end each petition with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and to which I invite you to respond, hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. If you happen to know uh, the Downs family or Kathy Holenbeek, uh, we encourage you as a family, as a, a body of Christ to reach out, whether it's with a card or a phone call or if you cross paths with her uh, in the coming weeks, uh, just reach out. Let them know you've joined with them in prayer, you are joining with them in prayer, and uh, for our students as well. Remind them that we love them and that uh, we, we hold out care for them as they do their thing and do the, be as best students as they can be. Let's come to the Lord in prayer this morning. God, you are love. You demonstrate your love for us by sending Jesus to die on the cross and rise from the dead so that our sins could be forgiven. Help us to live out the same kind of self-sacrificial love in our lives as well. Fill us with the Holy Spirit that your love may continue to transform our lives and overflow to the people around us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that you would be with those who are struggling in any way, shape, or form. Fill their lives with your peace and comfort. And if it is your will, grant them the health and healing that they need. We especially pray for the family or friends of Natalie Downs, who's dealing with cancer once again. We also pray for Kathy Holenbeek as she mourns the loss of her brother. For so many more, Lord, that are in our heart and throughout all of creation that are suffering, we place them into your care for you know their needs, you know our needs. 
we ask you to answer those prayers. Lord, we also thank you today for the innumerable blessings that you pour out onto our everyday lives. We thank you for the opportunity to learn and grow in wisdom in this world. And with that, we pray for each of our students, young and old, who are entering into a challenging season, the end of the school year, finals, projects, and perhaps so much more. Would you remind them, Lord, that first and foremost, they are children of God, and that, Lord, you would give them comfort and confidence to do what they have been studying and preparing to do. We also thank you, Lord, for the blessings beyond our understanding, those in which have saved us from body and spirit. In all these things, Lord, be with us. Lord, in your mercy. Good and gentle God, we pray in gratitude for our mothers and for all the women of theory who have joined with you in the wonder of bringing forth new life. You have become human through a we, you who become human through a woman grant to all mothers the courage they need to face the uncertain future that life with children always brings. Give them the strength to live and to be loved in return, not perfectly, but humanly. Give them the faithful support of husband, family, and friends as they care for the physical and spiritual growth of their children. Give them joy and delight in their children to sustain them through the trials of motherhood. Most of all, give them the wisdom to turn to you for help when they need it most. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, of all mercy, we pray that you would continue to bless the ministries here at Timothy. We stand in awe at the ways that you have blessed the people of Blue Springs and the surrounding communities through your, our efforts. We pray that you would continue to bless our work on behalf of your kingdom. May our love for you and others shine brightly in our congregation so that all may come to know of your incredible love. Lord, in your mercy. All these things we bring to your throne of grace, confident that you both hear and answer us. We do so in Jesus' name with the words that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We join together in song. Blessing 
proof that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I'd be willing to bet I know what you're thinking. It's on two different levels. One level you're thinking, wow, they planned this really good because we're doing the fruit of the Spirit. We're talking about the first fruit in the list, which is love, and it's Mother's Day right, where we celebrate the love that mothers have for their children, that we have for our mothers. It's almost like somebody planned that. Well, I hate to burst your bubble. Nobody planned it that way. It's just one of those happy coincidences. But at the same time, I'd also be willing to bet that some of you are also thinking, didn't we cover this already? I mean, just three months ago in February, we did an entire series on the idea of love, how God is love, how we are to love him, love our neighbors as ourselves, what that love looks like. And now we're talking about love again. Come on, guys, give us some credit. We were paying attention, right? And yet we have to talk about this again because as much as we may think we've got the love thing down, it's still something that we struggle with. Like I said, we think we understand what love is. We heard the words of the reading earlier where, for example, John said, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. We are loving people. Therefore, what? We're fine. We're golden. We can end early this week and get off to whatever plans we have for Mother's Day, right? That's the way that, well, not so fast. Because when we take a real honest look at ourselves, we realize that we do struggle with this idea of love. Part of the problem is is that we have such a fluid definition of what love is. We use that word in so many different contexts with such different meanings. And you know what really drove that home to me? A Pizza Hut commercial. I'm dead serious. Bear with me for a second. This came out several years ago. But Pizza Hut had just introduced this new kind of pizza. I don't remember what it was. And they really wanted people to get excited about it. So in this commercial... There was a delivery guy delivering one of these new pizzas and the door opened and the husband took the pizza and he opened it up and he took a big whiff of it and he said, I just love this pizza, love, love, love it. And then his wife popped up behind him and said, it's amazing. Getting you to say that you love me is like pulling teeth and you just said it four times to a pizza. And the last thing we see is the delivery driver looking just a little awkward, a little uncomfortable. But that commercial, as silly as it is, gets to the way that we use that word love. We overuse it in so many different situations and it means different things in each context. Like for example, I can say that I love my wife. I love my children. I love my country. I love drinking Coke. Even though I use the same word love in all four of those sentences, it means something different each time, doesn't it? At least I hope so. See, this is the problem. We think we understand what love is. But the real question we need to ask ourselves is, does our definition and understanding of love line up with the way that God understands love? Like for example, a lot of people nowadays seem to think that love is merely an emotional 
state. This is something that is reinforced with songs and movies and romance novels. Not that I have a lot of experience with that last one. But it's this idea that love is just an emotional reaction when we meet the right person and that's all that love is. And that's the drama and the fun of it. It's sort of like what happened a couple months ago in our house. Uh, My wife decided she wanted to binge watch Joe Millionaire on Fox. And because she was watching it, that meant I was watching it. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with this particular reality TV show, The idea is basically this. They had two eligible bachelors. One of them was a millionaire. The other was not. And they had to live in a mansion with a bunch of eligible young ladies. And none of the ladies knew which one was which. And so the question was, would they fall in love for good reasons or bad reasons? Would they find each other one true love? All that kind of stuff. It was entertaining. I'll give it that. Entertaining. (laughs) Especially since the non-millionaire, I don't remember his name, fell in love with two different ladies. One of which was an absolutely horrible woman that he felt, I'm sorry, I probably got more invested in it than I realized. (laughs) She was just awful, yeah but fell in love with her almost right away. But on the other hand, you have this sweet lady who is so nice and why can't he fall? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. But see, that's what we think love is. It's just an emotional response. We can't really help it. We just fall in love. Love just happens to us. And right there, that's part of the problem. Because if we always say is that love is an emotional response, state. That's scary because let me ask you this, how well can you control your emotions? You can't really. I mean, you might be able to direct it. You might be able to tamp them down a little bit, but ultimately emotions are reactions, right? Reactions to what's going on outside of us. We can't control them. They just happen. And if love is just an emotion, just an emotional reaction, well, then we're in trouble. Actually, I think that might explain a lot of what we see in our society today. People fall in love. They have that emotional reaction. So what do they do? Let's get married. And then what happens when the emotion fades? Well, I guess we're done. Time to move on to somebody else. Is that really all that love is, is just an emotion? Or how about this? The other problem we have is we put conditions on love. I know we're not supposed to because love is supposed to be unconditional and we say, yes, my love is unconditional, but then we turn around and we say stuff like this. I love you when, or I love you because. And we may be thinking that we're just giving the reasons why we love that person, why we have that emotional reaction to them, but what are we actually saying? I love you when you do this. Well, what happens if they don't do that? I love you because of why. Well, what if why changes? See, this is the thing. We're supposed to love unconditionally, and yet far too often we put limits on our love that are all based on me, my needs, my preferences, my desires. So long as you are fulfilling those for me, I love you. But if you don't anymore, for whatever reason, well, you can just forget it. See, this is the problem that we have with love. The problem we have with love is that like so much else in our lives, love is tainted by our sin. Because when sin gets into our lives, it wrecks it. It twists us around so that we're only focused on ourselves. And sin does the same thing to human love. Suddenly, human love is all about how I feel, the emotions that others stir in me. It's that passive feeling. Suddenly, excuse me, love is all about what you do for me and how you make me feel. Suddenly, love becomes all twisted up and around 
ourselves. And that's not how God defines love. In the reading for today, we heard that three word phrase. It gets thrown around a lot. That definition of love that's just this, God is love. And that's so good for us to remember because God is the one who sets the definition for love. He sets the example. He shows us what love is through himself. And how do we see our lo- God's love for us? Through Jesus. Through what Jesus did on the cross, dying and rising so that our sins could be set f- forgiven and we could be set free. Now, I know we talk about Jesus' death and resurrection a lot, like every week, but the reason why is because it's so important because that is the foundation for everything that we do. It's the foundation for this definition of love. So what does that God-type love look like? Well, we could preach a whole series on that. As a matter of fact, we have. But let's just hit three highlights today. The first thing to remember is this, love is self-sacrificing. True love puts the needs of the object of its affection ahead of my own. With all apologies to Janet Jackson, love is not, what have you done for me lately? Instead, it's what can I do to serve and help you? And when that kind of love gets loose, it transforms us. It transforms the world around us. It reminds me of a cartoon I saw a while ago that really drove it home for me. In this cartoon, there was a group of people traveling along. They were starving. They were hungry. They could barely hang on when they finally came across a pot of stew. But somebody had put this pot of stew on an island surrounded by a gigantic pit. None of the people could actually get to the food, but then they discovered these spoons with really long handles. And they thought, there we go, this is exactly what we need. We'll reach out and get the, the soup, the stew on that spoon, and then I can finally eat. And so they all started to grab the spoons, reach out there to try to get the stew for themselves. And you know what happened? They started knocking each other's spoons around. Pretty soon they were fighting with the spoons over this pit, knocking each other's spoon away, hitting each other over the head with their spoons. It was a mess. Nobody was getting anything. Everybody was getting hungrier and hungrier until finally one of the people who was sitting there just dejected felt somebody tap him on the shoulder with one of the spoons. And the person who tapped him reached out, scooped up some stew and brought it over to him so he could eat it off of that spoon. And when he saw that, he picked up his own spoon and scooped some and fed the person across the pit from him. And pretty soon, all of them were doing that, not trying to feed themselves, but feed each other. And suddenly they were all able to eat their fill and everything was so much better. See, that's a picture of what self-sacrificial love looks like. It's love that spurs us to help others to put others' needs in front of our own. More than that, love is an action. Oftentimes we think of love as just a passive thing that we just sort of experience, but love isn't love unless it does something. I mean, think about the song that we just sang. God so loved us that what? He sent his son. God didn't just sit up in heaven and go, guys, I love you so much and I have such warm fuzzies for you. Isn't that great? No, God's love spurred him into action, sending Jesus to die and rise so that we could be his children. Love is love when it's acted on, when we live it out in word and action. And finally, love is a choice. Love is a choice that we make every day. I've got a question for those of you who have been married for a while, and maybe not even for a while, 
short, long period, whatever the case may be. Obviously, the reason why you are with your spouse is because you looked at them at some point in your life and you had warm fuzzies for them, right? You had that puppy love, that emotional response. Some of you are looking at each other like, really, is that why we're together? It is, trust me. But now here's my question. Every day from the day that you got married up until now, have you always woken up and felt those warm fuzzies for your spouse? Have there maybe been days when your emotional reaction to them is not, ah, but it's, ugh. It's okay, safe space, you can admit to it. Maybe not in front of your spouse, that they don't wanna make your ride home awkward or anything. And yet you're with them anyway, right? Why? Because love is a choice. Love is more than just puppy love, feelings, rose-colored glasses, or anything like that. Love is saying, in spite of flaws, no matter what, with no conditions, I choose to love you. It's not just being involved with someone, it's being committed to them. And if you're not sure what the difference is between being involved and committed, well, just go to Big Biscuit and order bacon and eggs. Because here's the thing, in this scenario, the chicken is involved, the pig is committed. (laughs) It's true, it's absolutely true. This is the kind of love that God calls his people to. That's what the fruit of the spirit looks like. It's not just being involved with somebody, it's not just feeling warm fuzzies toward them and just bottling that up inside. It's not saying, what can you do for me? The love that God calls us to as his people is love that is put in action. Love that is a choice that we make every day. Love is giving of ourselves for the sake of others so that they can see God's love shining in our lives. Is that easy? No. It's not. But that's why we rely on God. We rely on the Spirit to help us live out that love in our lives every day so that people can see God's love at work in our lives and in their lives too. And so, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, may you live out that love every day May God's love be yours and flow through you to the people around you. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. And now may the the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. It's such a, it's such a good reminder to us of, of that, that challenge that God calls us to, to choose to love. And what better place to do it than starting here at church? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we're glad you're here with us today. Pastor John and I love you differently than we love, what do we love? Tacos and pizza, I guess. I don't know. But uh, we are glad you're here today. So may uh, today be filled with rich blessings and joy as we get to go out with the reminder of how much we are loved. And so we may we go and we will love one another. We close in song. I invite you to rise as we sing together on this day. We praise God as we head out. Let's sing. Son to 
Love of the Lord today. We'll see you soon.